Welcome back whiskey fans, let's have another Highland Park. So today this is probably one that a lot of people are excited about. A lot of people have probably either ordered this one or they're excited to hear what it's like. This is Highland Park, the new 15 year old Viking Heart. So Highland Park has had a 15 year old for quite a long time. And looking at other people's reviews of this, some people have been comparing it to the old 15 year old. Me personally, I didn't really know that the 15-year-old the was still available. 15-year-old, it did try quite a few years ago, but I haven't seen it available anywhere in quite a long time. So, yeah, Highland Park 15-year-old Viking Heart. It's good to see that Highland Park have released a new whiskey that has a decent age statement. And the first thing that everyone's going to notice about this one is that it looks like some sort of mutant milk bottle. Because <laughs> they've gone with this rather eye-catching. It's definitely unique these days. You don't really see it anymore. It's in a ceramic flask. So, again, you would think this is really well protected from UV. And you would think that this gives Highland Park no reason to add any sort of artificial colouring because you can't see the colouring at all or even the fill level, even with a torch, until you get it in the glass. Now, if you have a look on Highland Park website, they mention that this ceramic flask is made by Wade Ceramics, which is an English company. So thumbs up from me. And on the website, they mention all sorts of vague things about the environmental sustainability of this flask, saying that Wade Ceramics is a kind of environmentally responsible manufacturer. Now, it does make me wonder if Highland Park have decided to make that statement because they are kind of semi-aware that this is maybe a little bit of a silly move because, in my opinion, to replace what is normally glass which is one of the most widely and easily recyclable and least wasteful materials in the world with ceramic, which in theory is recyclable, but in practice almost never is. In my opinion, there's a little bit of a, a questionable move when it comes to the environment. Ceramic is also not the best material for long-term storage of whiskey. If you look on some of the auction websites, you'll see a lot of commemorative whiskey that's available or was available in ceramic decanters. And the problem with it is that the ceramic and the glaze can and does crack. And it doesn't always crack in a catastrophic and immediately obvious way. Sometimes, and in the worst case scenario, it can crack and sort of craze on the inside. And that starts the whiskey seeping into the ceramic itself. And if that does happen, you can not only lose your whiskey, but it can also taint the whiskey, and the whiskey can take on some of those flavours from the ceramic. Now, with this one, I'm not saying that there's going to be any disasters out there. If you look after it the same as you do a glass bottle, you'll almost certainly be absolutely fine. But me personally, I would be a little bit wary of keeping anything in a ceramic flask for more than a couple of years. It's just a little bit of a liability. And especially when you take into consideration that this, if you're going to throw it away, if you're not going to keep this bottle long term, then the bottle is almost certainly just going to be landfilled. I kind of hope that after Highland Park have had a little bit of exposure and all eyes on me from this rather striking ceramic flask, I kind of hope they'll knock it on the head and just go back to glass. Anyway, details from the label and from the website on this one. It's obviously 15 years old. It's a, a almost semi-respectable ABV of 44 ABV. We know that it's a single malt Scotch whiskey from the Isle of Orkney. And something that I really love on the back label, underneath the tasting notes, Highland Park seem to like to do that, it says cask driven natural colour. So no artificial colouring gone into this one. So absolutely hats off to Highland Park for that. But sadly, there's no mention of non-chill filtration. If you have a look on the website, and I think it might have been the Amazon UK website that I saw this, there is a, a vague, horrible statement from Highland Park where they say that all of their highest strength whiskies are either non-chill filtered or they're filtered through a filter at a, a cold but higher temperature. So I think they mention sort of between six and nine degrees, which they describe as ambient temperature, which 
depending on the time of year, on Orkney probably is ambient temperature. But that whole thing just seems like a little bit of a, a weasel word. It's very underhanded language in my opinion. It would be nice to just see on the label, is it non-chill filtered or not? More worrying than that, it kind of brings to the surface a potential problem that we've got here with chill filtration doesn't have a legal definition in terms of whiskey produced either worldwide or in the UK. We have legal definitions for a lot of stuff, but in my opinion we need tighter restrictions and definitions, especially on things like what constitutes a single cask, what constitutes cask strength, and what exactly is the definition of chill filtration. Because a lot of distilleries, when they chill filter, they take the temperature all the way down to zero or even below zero before they force it through that paper filter. But like Highland Park here, they say that they're not quite going down to zero and they're saying, well, that's not really chill filtration. I feel like the whole thing just needs to be tidied up and any loopholes need to be tightened up as well. Anyway, as for the casks that go into this one, if you do a little bit of digging online, you can find out that this is matured in sherry seasoned European oak, sherry seasoned American oak, and refill casks. So that sounds like quite a tasty recipe. So good age statement, reasonable strength, decent casks gone into this one. It is quite expensive. I think you're looking at about £80 for a bottle of this here in the UK. So all of these things are good signs. Point to this, it should be a very good whiskey. Let's get some in the glass and find out. I do quite like the, the ceramic flask, apart from the fact that it's probably terrible for the environment and it's probably responsible for adding another £10 to the cost on this. If it is because this is a, a bought-in item, obviously, and not a cheap or easy-to-make one, custom moulding and everything. I imagine it probably is adding significant cost to this one, which is never good. But it is nice. But hopefully, once they get over it, they can just go back to glass. So, Highland Park 15-year-old Viking Heart on the nose. So, immediately... There's much, much more of a sherry presence on the nose of this one. Definitely compared to the 10-year-old the or the Viking tribe, lots more sherry. I think there is quite a bit of sherry or sherry seasoned casks gone into the, the cask strength. But with the Highland Park 15-year-old, there's not only a lot more sherry in there, but it seems like more European oak sherry, more proper sherry that's and more whiskey that's been matured full term in those sherry casks. And that really makes a difference. Getting lots of sweet, fizzy, orangey sherry. Also much more obvious old maltiness in this one compared to any of these others. I would say that it's a very mature nose. I'd say that this probably smells kind of in the at least 18 years old, maybe even in the 18 to 20 year old mark. Some nice nuttiness on the nose. Nice leathery notes, sweet caramel. There's that lovely trademark Highland Park appleiness. There's definitely some peatiness in there as well. It's a light spicy peat with a little touch of soot. So, com especially compared to Highland Park over the, the last sort of 10-15 years, it's more of a, a dirty, more obvious, sort of slightly uglier peatiness, which is probably a sign of the times. A lot of malt fans know they want their whiskey, especially their peated whiskies, to be more robust, more edgy, more aggressive. And I think that Highland Park have probably noticed that. And I think that they've started to add a slightly edgier, more aggressive peat to their whiskey. Let's see how it tastes. Again, lots of, relatively speaking, lots of obvious, sweet, caramelly, sherry notes. Lots of maltiness, well-aged maltiness. Quite salty, quite maritime, 
definitely saltier than the the Highland Park Tribe or the Highland Park 10 year old which in my opinion are slightly more sanitized slightly just sweeter not more mature but just less character I think this has got more character also some really nice honey on the palate slight peppery Orkney style peat and I think there's just a little hint of gingery wood spice so maybe some evidence that some of those casks are a little bit raw a little bit sort of engineered maturation going on there just looking at the color of this one we know because Highland Park have done a fantastic job on this one as stating on the label it is this cask driven natural color and we know that this is at least 15 years old so for your reference and this is always good when you can do this that is what a 15 year old sherry seasoned American and European oak whiskey should look like that is natural color at 15 plus years so good to know as for the finish I'm gonna say medium long little bit of that spicy peat that's definitely present on the late palate and the finish with a growing bitterness coming through from some of that oak and I don't think that it's a problem on this one as much as it was on the, the Highland Park Viking tribe I think that some of the bitterness on that one some of those dark roast coffee notes were a little bit not the most pleasant but on this one that bitterness in the oak on the late palate it's more in fitting with the rest of the whiskey it's more in balance it's just an extra nice little facet to this whiskey I would say that this combination of sherry seasoned American oak European oak and refill casks I'd say that it's probably the perfect cask configuration for a Highland Park whiskey at this age it's also got a really nice lovely maltiness you can really taste the malt in this one you can taste that it's had a nice long maturation and it's a quality maturation from some quality casks I think that it's a very good 15 year old whiskey one of the things that I really like about this new Highland Park 15 year old is that you can really taste the age and the sherry which in contrast to the the other cheaper Highland Parks it has both in this whiskey whereas when you look at these other whiskies you've got bags of power in the cask strength it's a, a great whiskey that's well worth buying and the 10 year old is a nicely mature whiskey for a 10 year old whiskey but very underpowered with this one you've got the power but not necessarily the maturity so in this 15 year old viking heart it's kind of got the best features from the rest of the range and what's really nice is that it's even got some nice peat in there especially considering this is quite a bit older than the rest of the range it's really nice that they've managed to retain some of that peat but really sad to say this and as I said in the review for the Viking tribe I think that Highland Park because it is a slightly light style of whiskey you really need a good ABV behind the whiskey to carry those flavors and I think that this whiskey as nice as it is and as bloody expensive as it is at 44% it's still not quite strong enough especially when you consider that this is an 80 pound whiskey I think John from Just Whiskey, another YouTube channel that you should really go and check out and subscribe to, when he reviewed this whiskey a few weeks ago, he said that it's a good whiskey, but it's just that little bit disappointing, and I agree with that entirely. And for me, that's really, as it is on a lot of Highland Park, all down to the ABV. I think if this was presented at 46 or the 47 that you get the Highland Park Valfather in, it'd probably be a very different story. Because as it is, there's lots of really nice flavours in there. It's a really well made whiskey. But as it is, those flavours are just that little bit handicapped. And that would be fine if this was a 40 to 50 pound whiskey. Because they're asking for 80 pounds for this. That price is really a problem. I think that 80 pounds is a very expensive 15 year old whiskey to start with. And I do wonder how much of that is down to the ceramic flask which is a shame if that is part of the reason for the price tag but me personally I'm glad that I bought a bottle of this Highland Park 15 year old don't regret buying it at all and I'm going to really enjoy this one but I probably wouldn't buy a second 
As for a grade, I'm going to give this one a B plus, but only just. It's a very low B plus, and that really is all down to that not quite high enough ABV. So love to hear your thoughts on this Highland Park whiskey, and what's your favourite Highland Park? Thanks for watching, and cheers.